Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Unbounded Medium. Uh, today's topic is going to be on RF mathematics. A uh, quick agenda for what we're going to be doing today. Um, we're going to uh, hover over the units of power and comparison. We're also going to do the rules of tens and, and threes. We're going to kind of camp out in this area. This is where we're going to kind of build the core and the foundation of what we're doing today. And of course, application. Going to have some exercises and examples to apply what we're talking about today. So let's, let's talk quickly about the units of power in comparison, uh, the ones that we'll be dealing with today. Uh, I've highlighted in blue the ones that we'll be working with in our math today, but uh, quickly, even though uh, watt is not a part of what we're doing today, watt is the basic unit of power. Uh, so one watt is equal to one amp of current flowing at one volt. But for our purposes, uh, milliwatts, where we're going to hang out, where we're going to start. Uh, so one milliwatt is one one thousandth of a watt. So why, why do we worry about milliwatts? Um, today, uh, most uh, indoor 802.11 equipment operates at transmit power levels using milliwatts, typically within one to 100 milliwatts. Um, now, something to be mindful of with those transmit power levels, uh, they can be attenuated with things such as antenna cables, connectors. Uh, there's a number of equipment like uh, uh, attenuators, grounding equipment, lightning arresters, things like that. Anything between the transmitter or the transceiver up to the antenna can cause attenuation um, uh, to that, that power level. So, but then it gets to the antenna and from the antenna, the anten antenna will amplify that signal. And that brings up two points of discussion that we'll have later uh, regarding what's called isotropic or intentional radiator, as well as EIRP, equivalent isotropically radiated power. So intentional radiator, basically everything in between the transceiver and the antenna, but not including the antenna, everything in there is considered the intentional radiator. So the sum of the power of all those components uh, and loss uh, becomes the intentional radiator. And then once it hits the antenna, the antenna is going to focus or amplify that signal and the height of that amplification, that's your EIRP. We're going to be doing math to come up with both of those calculations today. So working our way down to, to DBM. DBM does provide a comparison, but instead of comparing one signal to another, it's comparing a signal to one milliwatt. Um, DBM, as it says here, is, it means decibels relative uh, to one milliwatt. So what you're doing is you're setting DBM to zero and equating that out to one milliwatt of power. Now because DBM is a measurement that is compared to a known value, in this case one milliwatt, it, it is actually a measure of, of absolute power. So we're working our way down now. So dB or, uh, or decibels, that is a unit of comparison, not a unit of power. And therefore it's typically used to represent a difference um, between two values. Uh, in other words, dB is a relative expression and a measurement of change uh, in power. In wireless networking, decibels are often used to compare the power of two transmitters, for example. But more often it's used to compare um, the differences or loss between ER, EIRP output from a transmitter to the um, received power level uh, at the receiver's antenna. Um, so that's, that's dBs. Now, um, we're going to work our way down to dBi, and that's where we're going to end for what we're doing today in math. So dBi is very simply a measurement of antenna gain. Uh, the dBi value is measured at the strongest point, or sometimes called the focus point, of the antenna signal. Uh, because antennas always focus in one direction or another, uh, their signal, um, th you'll never see that the DBI is a negative gain. It's always going to be a positive. It's not going to be a loss in, in, in gain. Um, now to the math. Now, uh, some people can get a little caught off guard uh, with um, RF math, but, but truly it's it's boiled down to tens and threes. So if you can add or subtract by three or 10, or if you can uh, multiply or divide by two or 10, then you've got all the basis, all the knowledge you need to do the full RF math. And we're gonna, we're gonna go into that here in just a moment. So let's quickly talk about the rules of, of uh, tens and threes. Simply as the screen says, it's pretty straightforward. So every three dB of gain, you're gonna be doubling your absolute power, multiplying by two. 
uh, 3 dB of loss, you're going to be having or dividing your absolute power uh, by 2. If you're gaining 10 dB, then you're multiplying the absolute power by a factor of 10. And then, as it says here, if you're losing t 10 dB, then you've got to divide your absolute power uh, by 10. So everything that we're doing today, that's the basis of the foundation of the math that we're going to be working on today. Now, um, we'll go through some examples in the slide decks, um, but I wanted to go through maybe two examples just kind of talking out with you using these, these rule, the rule of tens and threes that we just learned about. So let, let's say we have an access point that's set to transmit at 100 milliwatts, and it has an internal antenna that's rated at, let's say, 3 dBi of passive gain. Uh, the amount of power that's going to be radiating out of that antenna that is that highest level of RF signal, that's that EIRP. In that case, it's gonna be 200 milliwatts. Now, how do we get there, right? We had 100 milliwatts that we started out with and we had an antenna that was passively gaining 3 dB. Well, we added 3 dB. So if you look back at our rules of tens and threes, we added 3 dB, which means we got to double our absolute power, which took us to that 200 milliwatts. Um, so you can kind of flip that around too and add a different variable to that. Let's say we still have 100 milliwatt uh, AP, but this time the AP doesn't have an internal antenna. Let's say it has an external antenna and the cable connecting the AP to the antenna is now going to introduce uh, 3 dB of loss. So now we want to understand what is the power up to the end of that cable. So we said we're starting out at 100 milliwatts coming from the, uh, from the AP. It's hitting that cable, introducing that 3 dB of loss. So if you look back at our rules, we've got the half uh, divide our absolute power by two. So we got to take that 100 milliwatts and it's down now to 50 milliwatts at the end of that cable, at that connector before it hits the antenna. Um, but in this case, we don't, we don't talk about the antenna just yet. Uh, one more quick example. Uh, let's say our AP is at 40 milliwatts and we have an internal antenna that has had uh, 10 dB passive gain. Uh, in that case, we've um, added 10 dB, which means we are multiplying our absolute power by a factor of 10. So the EIRP in that scenario is 400 milliwatts. The AP uh, went from 40 milliwatts, hit the antenna, and now the EIRP coming out of the antenna is 400 milliwatts. But let's, let's take, um, once again, a similar example. Let's throw into the mix an external antenna requiring uh, an antenna cable. So still 40 milliwatts coming out of the AP, and now we have an antenna cable that's introducing 10 dB of loss before we get to the antenna. So in that case, we've lost 10 dB, which means we're dividing our absolute power by 10. So now at the end of that cable and connector, instead of 40 milliwatts, we're sitting at four uh, milliwatts. So let's, let's go through a couple uh, examples um, of, of this math, of how I learned it. But before we do that, I want to kind of build the template, the form that we're going to be working off of today. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with two columns. The left column is going to be titled DBM. The right column is going to be titled milliwatts. We're going to add uh, a plus sign and a minus sign to the left of DBM, and we're going to add a multiplication and division sign to the right of milliwatts. Basically, this is telling you anything that has to be done to DBM has got to be addition or subtraction, and everything that has to be done to milliwatts has got to be multiplication or division. Now we're going to add a 3 and a 10 to the left of our, our DBM, and we're going to add a 2 and a 10 to milliwatts. Once again, what this is, is creating parameters for you. So what we're saying is if you have to do any addition or subtraction uh, to the DBM column, it has to be performed with either 3 or 10. And the same thing with milliwatts. If you've got to do multiplication or division of milliwatts, it has to be done with 2 and 10. And the last thing we want to do is we want to add a 0 to DBM and a 1 to milliwatt, basically saying that you know, 0 dBm is equal to 1 milliwatt. So at this point, this is the basis, this is the foundation, the template that we're going to be working with as we go through our different examples. So on to uh, example number one. Um, actually, before we get to that, let's talk about the concept of doubling of power. So basically, every 3 dB 
of gain, you're going to be doubling your power. And every 3 dB of loss, you're going to be halving your power. doesn't matter what your power me measurement is, that concept's going to hold true. In this first example, we're going to kind of uh, show that uh, and we're going to actually double our power three different times. So even if you, for example, have 1.21 gigawatts of power and you introduce 3 dB of gain in that scenario, you're going to come out with 2.42 gigawatts of power. So that 3 dB plus or minus is always a doubling or a halving of your, your absolute power. So once again, let's start with our basis here that we just worked on. And the first thing we want to do is we want to double our absolute power. We want to double our milliwatts. So if you notice, just going to draw some arrows for examples right now, but we're going to take that one milliwatt and we're going to double it, which in this case uh, represents two. But since we did a doubling or a multiplication of two on the right side with our milliwatts, we now have got to plus that on the dBm side, which in this case is plus three dB. So now we see that a doubling of power represents 3 dBm. 3 dBm represents 2 milliwatts of power. And we can continue to double that, right? So if I double it again, we're going to take our milliwatts and we're going to double that 2. And now that becomes 4 milliwatts. Well, since I doubled it on the milliwatt side, on the right side, I've got to then add 3 more dB on the left side. Now I have 6 dBm. And the process continues, right? So now we're doubling 4 milliwatts and we're doubling 6 dBm. So that's the doubling of power. That's that concept of plus 3 dB constantly doubling your absolute power. So let's move on to another example. We're going to try to get a little deeper, a little more complex uh, with each example. So with this example, uh, we now have got, let's say we've got a, an AP that's generating 100 milliwatts of power, and it's got an internal omni antenna that's providing 3 dBi of gain. A signal gain. Now in this case we want to calculate the ERP value that's coming out of that antenna, right? So let's let's once again let's start with our foundation, uh, our template, and we gotta ask ourselves how can we go from one milliwatt to a hundred milliwatts? So you can kind of quickly think, once again I gotta work with two or ten, uh, so you got you can quickly think in your head, hey I can multiply ten twice to get to a hundred. So now we got a hundred milliwatts, and since I did ten twice multiplication on the right, I've now got to add 10 twice on my dBm's. So now we've, we've equated that the uh, AP is 20 dBm or 100 milliwatts, right? So now though we've got to introduce that antenna gain into our equation, in this case 3 dB. So we got to add 3 dB over here, bring those to 23 dBm. Now since I've added 3 dB on the left, I've now got to multiply by 2 or double on the right, 200 milliwatts. So our ERP, EIRP, in this example coming out of the antenna is either 23 dBm or 200 milliwatts. So let's do, let's do one more example here. Um, once again, adding some complexity uh, to, to our examples. In this case, we're going to be introducing an external antenna. So we're going to start out with our APs at 50 milliwatts, and we've got an external antenna uh, that's connected uh, with a cable introducing 3 dB of loss. But the antenna is amplifying or passively gaining that signal by 7 dB. So in this case, we're going to calculate two things, that intentional radiator that we talked about earlier, as well as the ERP coming out of the antenna. Let's start with our base once again. So how do we get from, 50, from 1 milliwatt to 50 milliwatts? You can multiply by 10 twice and then divide that by 2. Get you down to your 50 milliwatts. Now, we've, divide, we've multiplied and divided on our right. We've got to bring that over to the left of the dBm's. So we're going to be adding 10 twice and then we're going to be subtracting 3. So let's see what that looks like. So now we see that we've gotten to 17 dBm or 50 milliwatts. That's, that's where we are with our antenna, with our transmitter, right? Um, and when I get into these situations, I like to kind of uh, segment or label uh, accordingly the different components within my RF system. So the next thing I want to do is I want to introduce that cable so I can find out what my intentional radiator is, right? If you recall, the intentional radiator is everything from that transceiver or transmitter all the way to the antenna, but not including the antenna. So in this case, we know that the, the cable is introducing a 3 dB of loss. So I need to, once again, on the left side, I'm subtracting 3 dB down to 14 dBm. 
So since I've subtracted on the left, I have to divide by two on the right. 25. So my intentional radiator is 14 dBm or 25 milliwatts. But I still got another piece of the puzzle here. I want to know what the EIRP coming out of that antenna is. In my case, 7 dBi of gain. Now, how can I get to 7 dB? I've got to use 3 or 10, right? So very simply, you can see where you can, you can add 10 and subtract 3 to get down to your 7 uh, dBi of gain, which brings us down to a 21 dBm in that case. But since I added 10, I've got to multiply by 10. And since I subtracted by 3, I've got to um, divide by 2 within the milliwatts. So now the answer is I've got uh, an intentional radiator, 14 dBm or 25 milliwatts, and my ERP coming out of the antenna is 21 dBm or 125 milliwatts. Um, one little chart here that, that's been helpful for me. Uh, you can kind of see that um, with a little bit of, of creativity, um, you can come up with any combination of tens and threes to get to whatever integer that you're looking for. So guys, oops, excuse me. Guys, that wraps it up for us. That's, that's the topic of, of RF math. This process was what resonated for me. It's what connected the dots for me. I'm a visual guy, um, and, and this is what, what made sense to me. There are other methods out there, some more in-depth, some shorter, uh, but this is what makes sense to me. So soak in this chart. This will help you with, with being creative and, 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 and using your tens and threes to come up with any integer. But I trust, guys, that this, this video is informative, and I appreciate you watching.